All right, everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. This one is going to be about the ledge climbing system and let's go for it. Here we have some ledges. We can attach to it. We can move around from ledges to ledges. You have options to go forward, sorry, upwards, downwards, left and right, like I do. You also have the option to jump. Uh, so if you hold shift and one of the direction keys is A. You can also jump from one ledge to another. This can also work if you have something like this. If you want to jump from one place to another, you can. I'm just move it a little bit forward. Yeah, we need some more space like here. move here and then when I hold shift and a you can also jump to another ledge like this and then you can move around like so so yeah you can move up move down left and right and you can also jump to the right or left The character is also going to automatically choose if he has the option to have the lag contact on the surface, which is pretty cool. So he's going to automatically do that. So I'm going to show you now how it looks like without the traces. So I'm going to turn off the traces and let's see how it looks like because I haven't tested it a while without the, the traces appearing. So. This is how it looks like. Uh, there is some improvement I'm probably gonna do after this tutorial. Well, the hands, I'm going to improve the animation as well, but the hands, they can be also be done with IK. So depending on, on the ledge, the, on the location of the ledge, I'm going to be uh, setting the hand with IK. So the hand is going to be locked into the ledge and it's going to give it a little bit more realism when we actually do the ledge grab. And we're also going to work with IK for pl actually planting the, the food on the surface. So the character is going to be actually uh, look more realistic when we lock the feet on the surface where he goes for. And I need some improvements as well for getting the, the character to be on the height, on the on the appropriate height. As you can see, the hands are not really quite there. And when you move to the left and right, the animations, like they do not look really good. But that's a matter of changing the animations. And I'm going to do that for the Patreon members. But this is not a matter of uh, fixing the system. This is just a matter of locking the, the pelvis bone of the character into one place. Uh, so we can limit the, the location of the character from going forward or backwards. I want it to stand on the same axis, but if I do that, then I'm going to have to change some other things. And I don't know if it's going to work. It's just a, a suggestion, but that's one way of doing it that I could think of. Um, and I'm going to explain you later how you're going to, how you're going to be able to change the, the location where exactly the character is going to be after you press a certain key, for example. So you can also detach and you also have these other blocks here. I was just testing some things how I was just testing to see how the character would behave on different blocks. So here I have blocks depth. Uh, I tried to place different blocks with different depths uh, against the wall. So I have made this wall to be transparent. So I'm using a material a glass material here so that you can see so that you can see better how, what's going on behind the scenes and I press the left. As you can see, the character goes like this. If I press upwards, 
just to see how the character would behave on different situations. We also have the tilted ledge. Uh, so here, as you can see on the top left corner, it says ledge surface angle is bad. Well, that means that the surface of the, the angle of the surface of the ledge is bad because it's tilted. So the character cannot go for it. You can also change the code so that the, the character can, act, can actually grab that ledge, but I didn't make it possible for this tutorial just for, uh, just because we could have some bugs when we actually uh, detect ledges like this, but you can also change that in the code for the character to be able to detect and be able to actually grab those ledges that are tilted or inclined, like this one. Uh, so here we have height. So if I keep going like this, the character is going to keep going like that. So this is just a test for seeing how the character is going to behave on different situations. Here I also have depth. So if I keep going like this, the character is going to be able to trace it and is going to be able to place his hand, hopefully, on the ledge. Uh, here we have thin beams, uh, blocks, just testing some things, inclined beams, and there you go, that's it. So let's go for the tutorial. So the first thing you should consider when I have made a document here because it's easier to follow through. So the first thing that you need to notice is that for the traces to be able to detect the ledges, we have to ignore the walls. So I've selected all the walls and after I selected all the walls, I'm going to go to search on the details panel. You need to do this on your scene, by the way. Uh, you're going to have to search for collision and here on the collision responses, you're going to ignore the visibility of the trace responses so that we can, so that the traces cannot trace against these blocks here. The reason why we do not want to trace is because we only want to detect the ledges. That's it, right? So yeah, that's one way of doing it. Of course, there's a lot of other ways of doing this. And yeah, I'm playing a sound on the background. So that's just one way of doing it. That's the way I did it. But there's a lot of other ways to do it. So that's the first step. It's easier to select the walls because selecting each ledge, I think is going to be painful. So. So object preparation is crucial to prepare objects to enable them to be detected as ledges. Therefore, we select all the walls. Uh, go to collision settings and ignore the trace responses. Ignore the trace visibility. Ignore visibility, right? So now let's go for the code. Uh, here on the third person character on the event graph, I have selected, but I have, se I have made a separate graph only for the ledge system. We're going to go through everything step by step, right? So here we detect the ledges and start hanging. That's the first thing that we should do. Uh, so here, uh, when we press E, we're going to check if the character is already hanging or not, right? If not, then we run a function to start detecting ledges. If the calculation match, if the calculations match and indicate that the ledge is suitable for hanging, we start playing a montage. So now let's check the ledge hang action function to understand the types of calculations and traces we use to detect ledges. So here we have the, the comments, uh, of course. Here we press the E so that we can go to a branch. And this boolean is going to tell us if we are hanging or not. In case it's not, which is going to be the case, then we're going to start hanging. Uh, this is pretty crucial, by the way, what we have to do this. I have this function here called ledge hang action. Right. If the character is not hanging yet, then we're going to take action for the ledge hang. So what happens uh, as soon as I press play and I go to ledge and press E, this code is going to be executed, right? And this function is going to be the first one to be executed, right? So here, after that, we have the, the ledge hang action function. So here for the step one, we detect ledge and promote the values. So to detect the ledges and check their suitability for hanging based on the slope degree angle, as well as to detect the space for light contact, we perform a series of checks. We first will take a look at these checks step by step. Uh, here I have uh, the step one and I have another function, which is to detect ledge uh, suitability, right? So here uh, for the step one, we detect ledges and promote the values. 
So let's take a look at this function first. So here, as you can see, we have a lot of steps. One, we have one, two, four, and what we're worried about here is the step one to the third, to the third one. <clears throat> They're going to be responsible for detecting the suitability for the character to be able to hang on the ledge. The reason we have the trace by channel is because we want to detect only the objects that are visible to that channel. If we have this wall and it is ignored on the visibility for the trace responses, then this capsule trace is not going to be detected by this channel. I think that's the best way I can explain it. So for doing the capsule trace calculation for detecting the nearby objects, we have a series of calculations here, right? So here I use these two variables just because I can I can basically control where the capsule trace is going to be after we press a certain button, for example. So don't worry about these numbers. Uh, don't worry about those float values, uh, whatever float value is in here. So this is just a simple calculation for placing capsule trace. I get my current actor location. I add 80 on the top of it for the start and 80 to the end. So I add 80.1. The reason why I add 80.1 is because I don't know how Unreal Engine does this, but if you add dot one for the start, you're going to be able to have the trace to be detectable, something like that. I don't know if this is makes, yeah. I don't know if this makes sense, but if you add 80.1, you're going to be able to avoid bugs like that. So I get the actor up vector and the right vector so that I can basically customize these values later and place the trace wherever I want it to be. Uh, the radius, how height, blah, blah, blah. So I like to choose the color of the collapse graph based on the trace color. Uh, that way I can better know what's going on on the code and basically find easier which trace is responsible for so here, the, like this first trace here is just for detecting the objects, if, to detect any object that has collision, excluding the wall, of course. And so if an object is detected, then we save the hit fa result values. So I'm going to just enable the, the draw debug type for duration again, so that we can see better on the world. So as soon as we press E, as you can see, there is the sphere, this green sphere appearing. It is actually a capsule, is because the radius is too big. Uh, so yeah, we have this sphere or capsule, as you can say it, as you can call it. And we promote this variable to true. If it hits something, then we promote the first trace structure because we're going to use this hit structure value later, right? If it's false, then it's going to return false, and the function is going to be terminated, uh, and we're not going to we're not going to be able to keep running all those step two and step three. We're not going to be able to execute them because this value is true. It's going to return true, and the function is going to terminate here. So to show that that the function is going to terminate here, simulate this. So as soon as I press E, as you can see. The return it goes to the return node. Uh, it sets the ledge surface detected as false, which is going to cause this variable to be false. And it's like the, this other codes here are not going to be executed because the first one uh, is not going to be it's going to be false, right? So the code gets terminated here. The return node. So now for the step two is very interesting because we're going to be be detecting the possible ledges, right? So if you go to the ledge and press E, as you can see, we have a small capsule that is red. And this one is for detecting the possible ledges. So here we, we actually use the first trace structure hit result to actually determine where this capsule trace is going to be. And we have the impact point. I add a dot one here, just to avoid bugs to the end, and that's it. If the capsule trace hits an object, then we save the second trace structure, and we go for the next step, which is to detect the ledge, ledge's surface angle. 
which is the yellow sphere trace by channel. The small one, as you can see there. So here for calculating where the sphere trace for detecting the ledges surface angle is going to be, we actually use the second trace structure. So based on where it hits, we're going to use the impact point of that. We're going to calculate the forward line distance. We're going to multiply by five. Uh, so here for the vertical line length, I'm going to add, this is actually the height. Uh, for the height, vertical, yeah, vertical line length, yeah, I don't know. So we did this, and I guess that's it. So if that's true, which in most cases it will be after we go from the second trace structure, we're going to promote that to a variable, and now we're going to calculate the surface slope angle in degrees. So inside this collapse graph, we have some calculations. So based on the player pawn, we're going to use that to this function called get slope degree angles. And this is going to calculate the angles, the degree angles of that surface. And if the degree angles of that surface equals to zero, which in this case it is, but in this case it's not, If both of them are equals to zero, which in this case it is. So if I do this, it's not going to be zero anymore. And if I do this, it's not going to be zero to the roll degree angle, right? So it has to be flat uh, in order for us to be able to actually grab that ledge. Uh, I don't use the impact point for this. I'm going to just, I'm just going to dilute it. So here, yeah, I just connect the impact normal to here, and that's just that. And based on this condition, if the angle is suitable for ledge hanging, then we're going to get to true. And this is going to print a string saying that the ledge condition is good. In case it's not, like the code is going to terminate here, and nothing is going to be executed. Like as you can see, if I do, if I go to this ledge here. The code is going to be terminated here and none of this is going to be executed. So in case the ledge condition is good, as it happens when you go here, the ledge condition is good. We are going to execute the first the, the step four, which is to detect the space for the legs contact. So I have different animations here. If you go to the animation blueprint, we're going to go to this later, but I'm just going to show you. But I just want to show you the animations that I have. So we have the ledge hang idle, which is this one. So the, the legs of the carrot does not have contact with the surface. So I have different animations for the hang idle animations. So for that, we're going to be... So for that, we're going to spot a capsule trace, which is going to determine if the character has space for the leg contact. So I have made a variable, a Boolean variable called legs contact. So in case if it's true, then the character should have uh, his legs in contact with the surface. I can show you a pretty close example as we do it here. As we do it here, the legs should be able to have in contact. As you can see, the capsule, the, in this case, it's the blue capsule. Uh, if the blue capsule gets in contact with that surface, if it hits uh, the surface that the carrot is in, uh, if it's that surface, that, that means that the character should have the, his legs in contact with it. So for calculating the position of the capsule trace, here it is. So this is not really important, by the way. This is just for uh, details. And it doesn't matter if it goes to, if it goes false or true, the light surface detect is going to be true here. So we're not gonna need to worry about this code anyway. So now we're coming to the part where we have to play the hang idle animation. So if the object being traced passes all the checks until the third step, we should be able to advance and start playing the idle hang animation. So I have this event here, we call that. We call this event, which is this one. And it basically plays a montage. And optionally you have the option to choose 
if you want to limit the character's constraint in one axis so that the character cannot move to any other axis instead of that one. So what I mean by that is based on the traces impact, the second trace structure hit result. Impact to normal is telling that the character should be on that axis in order for it in order for him to be able to effectively move to that direction. It is going to restrict the player axis into into that direction based on the impact norm of that second trace. I don't know if you get it, but I think that's the best way to explain it. So I'm just gonna read it. Uh, we set the plane constraints constraints to restrict we set the plane constraints to restrict the character's axis movement. That's it. So based on the second trace structure, we get the impact norm of it. And we get that into the plane normal so that the character is going to be restricted to the axis where he's moving at, right? Uh, I don't personally use this because it doesn't have much effect, but uh, this is just another way, this is just another method of doing it. Maybe this is going to be useful in the future as you want to use different methods, I don't know. Display large montage event, that's all it does, it just plays this just place the montage based on the parameters that you choose here, right? So I have these parameters available for me here. And we have the legs contact, which is going to decide which idle hang animation we're going to be playing. So the legs contact boolean will decide whether the character should maintain the leg contacts with the surface while ledge climbing. It will determine specific parameters that enable customized animation montages and options for the ledge climbing action. For example, here we play different idle animations depending on whether the character's legs would touch the surface or not. We also adjust the playback rate and start animation position time frame to ensure in smoother animation transitions. After that, we call an event named as play ledge montage event, which will play the montage with the parameters we've chosen based on our legs contact boolean. So as you can see here, setting the plane constraints is an optional choice for limiting or restricting the character's axis based on the second trace impact of normal. So now we're going to move on with the ledge hang action function. And after confirming that the ledge surface is in good condition for proper character ledge attachment, we we'll call a function named ledge movement mode, which is a function that will prepare the character's movement for better controllability and precision when initially attaching to the ledge as well as for its smooth movement along the ledge. So this function here is just for setting the character to be able to move his smoothly on the ledge. Uh, because we set the, the character to be on the movement mode of flying, so we need to change some acceleration values, max speed, and other things. As well as for stopping hanging, we need to set these values back to its default value. So that's how we do it. Now let's go for the sequence. Now the other two events are for positioning the character on the ledge. So let's firstly take a look at the set ledge actor rotation event. So as you can see here on the title, we're going to save the actor's current and desired location and rotation. And we're going to stop the timeline if the actor stops hanging. So here you have the set ledge actor rotation event. We firstly set the actor location as the current location. We can only save the current actor rotation of the character. Well, this is necessary because we need to reference it on a timeline, which takes and reads the current actor rotation at each frame. So actually for us to be able to arrange the rotation of the character in a way that is going to face the ledge, as if I were to go into this direction here on this rotation, and I would press E, the character is going to perfectly rotate in a specific time, in a specific time frame. In this case is dot 13 milliseconds. In this case is dot 13 seconds. And it is going to rotate that. If I want to change, if I want to change how long the character rotates, let's say for example, one second. So if I want the character to rotate at one second, it is going to do that, and it's probably not the best option. So I'm going to leave it at dot thirteen, 
and the time is going to be dot 13. The value most of the time is always one because the reason why is because we're going to we use something called uh, is it lerp vector, All right? And it needs the alpha, and it needs the alpha. So I've made a function called ledge hang position function, which you have two options to choose if you want to arrange the rotation or location of the character. Let's firstly take a look at this function and let's go for the current rotation first. Uh, here, based on the first trace structure, I get the impact normal and then I get the rotation from X vector. And here I fix the rotation of the character in 180, adding 180 degrees. And that goes to the target rotation. So now I know which rotation the character needs to be at in order for it to face the ledge. And that's it. That's simple as that. Uh, if I don't mark this option, so yeah, uh, this is going to get the current actor location as we previously saved it here. So we get the current actor location and save it. It is stored in this value, in this variable. Uh, so we get that variable. So this is the current location. So this is the current rotation and this is the target rotation. So the LERP rotator function is going to pick a initial value and then smoothly rotate to the target rotation, right? In this LERP rotator function, we have the shortest path. And this is going to ensure that the character is going to take the shortest path for, in order for you to rotate. So let's say, for example, if the character is rotated at 180 degrees, he doesn't need to turn 360 to actually reach the desired path, which is 90 degrees. So, so for example, if I take this off and disable this, uh, the character wouldn't be smart to choose what is the, the shortest uh, rotation degree that the character should take uh, in order for you to complete the rotational value, the rotation, right? So if I would come here and then press E, the character would rotate like more than 360 degrees in order for you to attach it in the ledge. <clears throat> so if I take this option to be true, uh, to choose the shortest path, uh, this function is going to like determine which is the best uh, rotation of value that the character should take based on the current and target rotation of values, right? Uh, so it doesn't matter which side, which rotation the character is facing at, it's going to always take the shortest path and that's it. Now I have this value here, uh, this variable, it's actually the, it's taking the input of whatever is inside of it. So here uh, I have created inputs on this function. Uh, one of them is rotational uh, rotation alpha. So it is here. If you want to call it, you can just call it like this, rotation alpha, so you can get the result. So the, al the output result is going to depend on the input result to put it here, right? So that's what happens here. And this return value is going to be to the new rotation. We're going to set the actual rotation. Uh, so that the timeline is going to be is going to be doing the job for us. So based on this boolean, if you want to arrange the rotation, we choose it here. We just uh, put this option to be on, to be true. And here in this case, for arranging the location, we just put this value to be true. And that's it. And don't forget to also plug in the alpha so that it updates with the right a timeline with the right time frame. But I think if you do if you do the opposite, I think it's going to yeah do something not great. Now for calculating where exactly the character should position himself on the ledge, we firstly save the current actor location as we do here. So as we've saved that, we're going to use the LERP factor, different from the LERP rotator. And now we do the calculation for calculating what's going to be the forward 
location of the character and the height offset. Uh, the reason why you do this separately is because we want to be able to modify where the character should be able to be on the height position and the forward and backward distance. So here we have two variables, which we're going to be able to modify later. I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to modify them later. So here on this collapse graph, we have the forward offset. And we have the calculation for calculating where the character is going to be at based on the first trace hit result. Right uh, Here we have the impact point. So we use that. And we use the forward vector offset. For the height offset, we do the same, but we calculate with the, the current uh, scaled capsule size. We're going to take that and we're going to get the offset and we're going to get the, the impact point Z height of the third per trace uh, of the third trace structure. And we're going to calculate that to be the height of the character where the character should be at on the ledge. And all of this is going to go to the set actor location. So if you want to read more about how you can create the timelines, you can access this website here. I'm going to leave on the description below. So now let's go to the direction of movement input. So here you have it. Let's firstly take a look at this ledge move left here. So we're going to comprehend all these other nodes. So here we firstly check if the character is holding the left shift after he presses the A key, which is one of the direction keys to move the character. So if the character is holding shift, then we're going to jump. And here on the jump collapse graph, we have this function, which is called ledge movement parameters. We basically set these parameters based on our needs. So if I want the character to jump left, I'm going to place the trace to be detecting where the character intends to go. And I have all the settings, all these functions and events inside of each collapse graph, because I want to basically use different parameters and different animations for each directional key. So let's suppose the character is holding shift and he presses A. So we're going to be executing this function here, this collapse graph. So if you take a look at what we have inside this function, we have this, uh, we just basically promote all these values. And they're going to be like, these values are going to be used on whatever comes after to be executed. In this case is the ledge move directions event which in this case is the ledge movement directions event, right? Uh, here, as you can see, we have the ledge movement directions event and we prevent the ledge direction of movement button spamming first. So this is going to prevent the, the player to be spamming the button and provoke, I can show you right now. So if the character is like spamming buttons, the, the movement of the character is going to be all weird and messy. So we don't want that. So we're going to connect it back and compile, save. Perfect. Now for the project, project traces in the direction the character intends to go, checking if such place is suitable for ledge hanging. Now this is also important. If you take a look at the ledge detection function, it is the same function that we use for detecting the ledge, for, for making the character to be hanging on the ledge in the first place, right? So now we use this ledge detection function again to detect and predict where the character is going to be and what is condition of the ledge that the character is going to be before he actually goes into it, if that makes sense. So we're going to be using our customized parameters as we have set there, as this. We're going to be using our customized parameters as if we want to jump left or either right, I don't know, uh, we're going to be able to change the trace left right multiplier. So in this case, it's negative 222, whatever, 220, it can be uh, whatever value that it's needed for the character to be able to jump. It's also going to depend on the, what animation you have. For example, this one here, I can predict how, what is the distance that the character is going to be able to reach, right? So based on uh, the animation you have, you're going to be able to modify this value to fit your needs. So 
yeah, we're going to use these parameters. And if the light surface is detected where the character intends to go, uh, this condition is going to be true. And now we're going to play a direction ledge montage. So this, uh, we're going to choose the parameters. Uh, we're going to plug in the ledge montage to play. We're going to choose the play rate starting position. And you can also make these parameters available if you want inside here, as I've done here. It's up to you. I think it's a, a good option if you have different animations that needs perfection. So if I go to this event, it just plays the animation the montage with the, with the parameters I chose here, right? And this delay duration until the ledge grab, which affects the height. You have to be careful with this, with uh, changing this. Uh, for the jump one, as it takes too long, I uh, have the delay duration to blah, 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 at one second, dot three. If I, in case I would like choose to be two, for example, uh, I think this is the jump left, yeah. So as soon as I jump, it is going to take two seconds until the code corrects the, the actual location of where uh, the character needs to be at. So this code, like this delay duration is going to determine how long the character should take until uh, the code tells the character where exactly he should be at, he actually should be at. Right. So if I do it too early, let's say for example, about two seconds, I, so this one, you know, it will be weird. So, so that's what it is for. And going back there, we're almost finishing. So after this delay, we're going to check if the characters are still hanging because maybe the characters, maybe the player already had the, the detach option to be, uh, maybe the character is not hanging anymore and this code is going to be executed, it's going to be a mess. So if you have any other actions that stops the character from jumping to the left on the ledge, then you can put it here. You could do end boolean. And let's say if the character is falling, that could be a good one. Yeah, it's falling on the character movement component. You can also do that. Sorry, it's to or boolean. So if the character is falling, don't do that. Something like this. So I can you can add as many as you want. Uh, so just be sure what's what's in your project and what uh, the needs that you need for doing that to avoid bugs. So here is the position character on the ledge. So here I have two as in the other code. Uh, we set the ledge actor rotation, which is an event, which is this one. Uh, we also have the option to set the actor location. And I have this one disconnected because I don't really need it. I was having some weird, like, I don't know, rotational bugs like this one. Yeah, I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, I need to improve this code more. This is optional. But if I do this, it's just going to rotate the character to face whatever the tracing pack point normal tracing pack normal decides. But if you want to get the actor rotation, it's up to you. Um, so yeah, the act is just going to rotate based on the direction of the ledge. But if you don't do that, the actor is going to be just fine. It's not gonna, it's not really necessary. Uh, here we have the set actor location, which is going to just ensure that the character is on the ledge. So this is just optional for you. Uh, you don't really need to do this. It's just to ensure that the character stays on that ledge and just make sure that the character is on that ledge with the right parameters that we've chosen.
based on the trace results that we get from there. All right. So let me close everything here. There's too much tabs open. So now let's move back to the direction of movement input. So as, as I've said earlier, uh, each collapse graph has their own different parameters. And here we're going to choose if the character, let's see. Here we are, if we are pressing the left control and we move to the left, the character is going to move slowly. That's just an option that I've chosen. It's not really necessary, but this is just a, a demonstration of how things are too much flexible here. You can choose whatever uh, you decide. Uh, so if the character is holding control, we can move slow. So if it's true, move slow. And if the character has leg, no legs contact, then we're going to decide which one we should take. So that's just a matter, if you want to change the animation, that's just a matter of changing also the, the delay duration, the trace, all these options here that you find appropriate. If you think that the character is not reaching the height that you need, you can also just adjust the pelvis location. Uh, but that I don't recommend that because you can also cause some bugs. But you can do this by just setting the pelvis and then click on this option to key. So that's going to set the actor, the, the pelvis of the, the pelvis bone of the character to be lower on the animation. And it's totally up to you and you have to be careful with these changes. So we're almost done with explaining the character blueprint part, but what about stopping the character from hanging or detaching them from the ledge? So if you go back to the ledge system on the event graph, uh, we have this function that we've, I think I I've, I've did, I've done, explained earlier, but you have the option to choose to toggle the ledge hang mode to on or off. So if the character is already hanging and you press the E again to detach the character, you just have to call that function and then just make sure that it's it's disabled. So it is going to go to false and it is going to execute the stop hanging function here. Um, so it's going to stop the animation montage that is currently playing. Now we're going to set all the movement behavior back to normal again, disabling this uh, this is hanging, which is pretty important for the animation blueprint menu. I'm going to go to that later. So it essentially sets the character movement parameters to favor the movement behavior of the character on the ledge. And so now let's finish up by taking a look at the character animation blueprint, right? This one. And so here I cast, so like, if you take a look at the event graph, uh, here I cast the character. We set the essential values. That's the only values that we need if, to check if the character is hanging or uh, the character is having legs contact on the surface, right? So if you go to the animation graph to have a separated state machine, the reason for this is that we can freely expand our code, our code base to be, to have whatever states that is necessary to be in the state machine of the light system. So here I have nothing more than just the main states, which grabs the main state poles from this one. So we basically transition from main states to ledge idle if the is hanging variable is true and transition back to the main states if the character is not hanging anymore. Now for the ledge idle, I use the blame poses by Boo, which is going to basically choose the right animation depending if the legs, if the character is having the leg contact with the surface or not. And that's basically it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can comment down below. I have this document I'm going to pin out on the description below so you can have access to it. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you can comment down below. And I see you in the next one. Bye bye.